You know, there have been many times that I've scratched my head, if I'm being quite honest, on why things are done the way they are done at Blizzard. And it wasn't until I met and saw this video from an ex-Diablo dev. This is Andrew Chambers. And I'm going to link his video on the video description of my video. But the video was Diablo designer and why we couldn't make last epoch. Now, I'm not gonna go into the 30 minute video. There's a lot of information there. However, I do have a key takeaway and probably the main takeaway from this video amongst a lot of things. And he shared a lot of information during his time at Blizzard. Now, Andrew was a senior game designer at Blizzard with Diablo 3. He was there up until 2020. And after looking at his resume and career, looked like he was relatively at Blizzard for around eight years. He had a stint for three years. He went somewhere else and then he came back for another five years, all the way up till 2020. So he hasn't been there for over three years, but Basically, in this video, he acknowledges that they had the talent, they had the resources, but as a company, they wanted to appeal to more players and a wider audience and therefore chose that over making a game that's more quality oriented and more depth in their systems, in their game design. They, they had this mentality that, you know, we can't make games complicated. Yes, we can add more depth. We can add more complexity when it comes to skills and itemization and all that. However, a lot of people don't have that kind of time. They work, they only have X amount of hours a week. So let's appeal to the masses instead of trying to make a game that's more in depth and quality. And hence, Andrew refers to it in the video why they can't make a game as in depth and quality wise, as far as itemization. And, and he goes on and on about how fabulous their faction system is, and it is. Um, but it got me thinking and the light bulb went off for me now. I'm not here to toot my horn, but I've been basically saying this since day one, where I've always felt, and again, I'm, I'm someone from the outside not knowing the inner workings of Blizzard and how game does it always scratch. I always scratched my head. Why are they refusing to do what's so blatantly obvious? Just put more meat in the game, add more complexity, make, add more quality. It just always seems like they're skirting around the surfaces, adding a little bit, but not really going into the core of whatever needed improvements, whether it's end game itemization, and I can go on and on and on. And after watching this video, I was like, well, there you go. It's a mindset, it's a priority, it's a business decision that they are more worried about selling more copies than making a quality game. And you, you can't deny the fact, now Andrew's not been with Blizzard for over three years. So you kind of take what he has to say with a grain of salt. Who knows, he could be bitter. He doesn't come off bitter. He comes off very genuine and honest to be quite honest with you. Um, and actually he doesn't say a lot of despairingly bad things about his time there. He goes on and on to talk about how talented everyone is at Blizzard. And actually when he first joined Blizzard and he went there, he thought he was like a really good game designer. And it wasn't until he went to Blizzard that he realized, holy crap, I'm surrounded by brilliant people. I am not as good as I thought I was. 
Um, so he actually has a lot of great things to say about Blizzard. And he explains in very simple, in a simple way and about fact that this is just how the priorities were at Blizzard and why they can't make games that are quality and hold depth. They, they are concerned about getting to the masses, right? And now the light bulb did go on and I wanted to make this video. Number one, go watch his video if you want to know more about it. It's a really nice behind the curtain look at kind of all the decisions they made with Diablo 3. Really, really uh, interesting topic and a behind the scenes look. But after I saw this video and I had time to think about it, I, I wanted to make this video because I have a couple of thoughts. And that is, number one, we also have to take this with a grain of salt. He, Andrew that is, this, his time at Blizzard was during the Bobby Coptic era, okay? Bobby Coptic was there until the end of 2023. Andrew was there until 2020, right? So it's not a secret that Bobby Coptic's priorities with everything Blizzard was the almighty dollar and making money for the company. It wasn't about creating good games, wasn't about making quality games, it wasn't about let's make a stellar quality quality. It wasn't about that. Actually, from some of the articles and information that I got my hands on and read about, it was quite the opposite. He actually would give crap to people if they were wasting time on enhancing the game. He literally just wanted to squeeze every dollar out of every game, out of every IP that the game sat on. He was not concerned about the quality of the game. So we got to remember that Andrew was there during that time frame. So the correlation between what he's saying and other information that I have found out during the Bobby Coptic era, there's a huge link and it correlates to what he's saying and makes sense to be quite honest with you. Now, I bring this up because I hope, I hope now that that era is the past and Microsoft has stepped in and there's new players there, sort of, um, that this mindset changes. So only time will tell. It's going to be very interesting to see if they continue to create, you know, adopt this methodology of the almighty doll, dollar. Sorry. Now, I have to say, while I'm making this video, this comes out, which is, you know, kind of goes back to what Andrew was saying. They're, all, they're concerned about appealing to the masses and... Call of Duty players unhappy. There's an $80 Kong gloves costs more than the game. And this is on Eurogamer. And it's this beast glove that, you know, it's all over Reddit. It's all over X. It's all over YouTube that Call of Duty is actually selling this one shot. It one shots players apparently i don't play call of duty but this is what i've been told this club for 80 bucks you get it and there's a, a myriad of things that you got to do in order to get it but it's 80 bucks and it one shots players but my point is this is another example of how blizzard really it's about this like, how do you sell a microtransaction, right? This is what this is what this is. That's more expensive than the game. Like, you have to understand when you're, whether this is game development, you're in the video game industry, whether you're in, you're in banking, whether you're in finance, whether you're in retail, 
whatever, whatever business you're in, things like this have a chain of command that has to get approved by. And any good company worth their salt always thinks about what are the benefits? What are the cons? And the fact that this gets made, goes through the lab, gets tested, they price it out, they put all the marketing material around. This has to be approved, obviously. No senior game developer and the art department are going to make this and put it out without the higher ups knowing about it. This has to get stamp a stamp of approval from their bosses and their bosses' boss. This is $80. It's worth more than the game. And it does. And it's out there. And you can buy it. And, you know, they're going to deal with whatever ramifications there are. But guess what? People are going to buy this. <laughs> And so be it. It's your hard-earned money. You can do whatever you want. But the point that I'm trying to make here is the fact that this represents the mentality of the company. So take that for what it's worth. Um, I have to say, very, very interesting um, video from Andrew, the, the Diablo 3 former Diablo 3 dev. Now, he has since moved on. He's bounced around. He went over to Netflix and got let go, apparently, due to funding. And now it looks like he's doing some sort of consulting, has his own company on game development, if you want to be a developer. And, you know, we wish him well. But very interesting video on the behind-the-scenes look. So I, 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 I tell you, go watch it. It's uh, very interesting very interesting video it's worth your 30 minutes or something like that but anyway surprise 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 guys like i've been racking my brain since the launch of diablo 4 trying to figure out like it's so obvious and not just to me to everybody that has played diablo 4 why why do they choose it's the money it's the money, and they want to appeal to the masses, so they have to forego. The outcome of that is they can't create complex systems because the masses don't have the time. They want to appeal to the casual, to the greater player base. So let me know what you think. Is it a wise decision do you think do you think this mentality is going to change because as i stated earlier andrew was there during the bobby coptic era that is now the past has been since the end of 2023 so i would imagine it's going to take a while for that mindset to erode and get out of the company if that's their intentions and we're only in you know 4 months into him being gone um, my hope is that, yes, it does go away. And because you know what the saddest part is? Andrew goes on and on about how talented the people are at Blizzard, how they are some of the best game designers in the industry. And he like they have the resources. It sounds like they have the talent. So it's disheartening to know that you know, you're kind of sitting in a Ferrari and the driver is refusing to get out of first gear and, and, and really displaying the full potential of the car. In this case, the full potential of what they're capable of doing as game designers. This is what is the most disheartening. And if I'm a game designer at Blizzard, I too must... I feel bad that they must be disheartened, that they know they have the tools and the resources, but yet they're kind of handcuffed by this business methodology and strategy. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you think. What do you think? What does this mean going forward for all Blizzard games? Forget about just Diablo 4. Season 4 is literally four weeks away. We're going to find out more and more about what information they're going to take from the PTR, 
if any, and what changes they're going to be making. So that's very interesting. But, you know, I want to try to keep a positive spin on going into season four. So let me know your thoughts. The positive person in me hopes this is all the past and they're going to get beyond this. But is that the wrong way to approach things? Is this the right approach? Appeal to the masses. You're going to sell more copies. Forget about making in-depth systems in itemization and, and stuff like that, like Last Epoch, like Path of Exile, for example. And I mentioned those two games because they're in the same genre as Diablo 4. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. I would love to hear them. Anyway, if you can like, comment, and subscribe, it'll help grow my community and channel, and I would really appreciate that. And as always, we'll hope to see you next time. Take care, everyone. The opinions expressed in this video are mine and solely mine. Healthy debate is always encouraged. Hate is never welcomed. So get over it.